Hello everybody, it's April 16th, 2016, and I'm going to be making a scale model of the flat earth in my backyard. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take all the measurements that are used for the flat earth and change the decimal place over by three, po three points and change the remaining values to feet instead of miles. So for a 24,000 mile diameter disc, it's going to turn out to be 24 feet wide. Likewise, for the 3,000 mile high sun, I'm going to get a stand that is 3 feet high, or thereabout. Um, the one that I found is 3 feet 6 inches, so that would translate to 30 or 3,500 miles to scale. Now, I'm going to pick three observation points, and I'm going to pick pretty close to my home location, very close to Daza's location in New Zealand, and again in Ushuaia, Argentina, because it's like a really cool place. It's the lowest city on the earth. So basically 3,000 miles translates to 3 feet. Um, 32 miles, which is the estimated size of the sun according to the flat earth, would to scale end up being 0.38 inches. So it's not even a, it's not even a half inch. Um, my distance from the North Pole, where I live, is 3,346 miles. So that translates down to 40 inches from the North Pole. Daz's location is roughly 8,750 miles from the North Pole, which translates to 105 inches. Ushuaia is 9,989 miles from the North Pole, which translates to 119 inches. The equator is 6,215 miles from the North Pole and the South Pole, as funny as that is ends up being 74.5 inches from the North Pole. So we're going to go ahead and make this model, base it on the actual angles from the international date line, so I can find out where to place them on the model around the circle. And I'll list the angles there when I'm actually doing the build. And I'll see you outside. Well, as you can see, I've made a disc that is 24 feet wide all the way around. Nice little disc here going on. With an equator line that has got a 12 foot di diameter. I'm using that as the center line to mark the North Pole for now. I'm going to be changing that to my altitude for the sun and moon after I get all the measurements set. This line is what I'm using as the international date line because it makes measuring the um, longitudes a lot easier when I try to figure out where to place my markers at for each observation location. And as I get those set up, I'll remove that center marker and start using that as the sun and moon stand since it's just over three feet tall, which would make 3,000 miles above the flat earth. So, see you soon.
Now to continue on, I've placed three markers at respective locations on the disc as they are supposed to be. The first location is at 86 degrees west, which is close to where I live. I'm marking with that. And to scale, it is 40 inches from the North Pole. Further down this way, I've left a marker for Ushuaia, Argentina, which is to scale 119 inches from the North Pole. Way over here, I'll show you where my location is. There's my location, and all the way down here is the marker that I'm using for Auckland, New Zealand, which is close to where Dazza lives. So you can see I'm all the way on the other side of the disc. And just to make sure that you guys know this, my location is at 80, like I said, 86 degrees west, which with this being the center line for the, for the uh, international date line, that's 86 degrees west. Ushuaia is at 80 or 68 degrees west from the international date line. Auckland is 174 degrees east. So the, there's our angles. And from this point, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be moving our North Pole to show where the sun and moon are located at, and show what they look like from each one of these points of view. Now then, I've positioned a tape measure at 138 degrees east, because that's the location of the sun when me and Daza filmed our simultaneous footage of the sun, and the sun's location to scale is seven and a half inches above the equator. So I will now move my North Pole, oops, since it's no longer needed, to seven and a half inches above the equator. There you go. And that pole is three feet six inches, so it's a little higher than your flat earth, so this will actually be into your benefit. And I will get back with you as soon as I get with all the materials I need to actually make the sun and moon. For the sun, I'm going to use a golf ball. I drew a black dot on it to represent the sunspot that both myself and Daza both filmed. So we're going to position that to where the sunspot's in the same position to where I filmed it from and then move over to Daza's location and see if it matches up with what he saw. Okay, as you can see, I've got the golf ball placed on top of my three and a half foot pole. I'm going back to my location, which is right here. I'm going to place the camera right at where it's at. Zoom in to where we can see the sunspot. And then I'm going to switch over to Daza's location in one shot without changing the zoom to see if everything matches up with what Daza saw. So here we go. Moving in. And zooming in. Okay. That is very, very close to the sunspot that I saw on the 14th. So without changing the zoom, I'm going to go over to here to Daz's location and look at it again. Wow, where's the sunspot? It is not in the same location Daza saw it from, from his location. You can barely see it there right on the very edge of the left side of the sun. So, there's proof number one that the Earth is not flat. Also to note, without changing the zoom, that sun is still actually a little bit smaller. Not much, just a little. But we'll check out with the moon. Well, actually, we'll go to Us Usawai and see if the sun changes size with the same zoom level. So here we go, all the way over the Earth to Usawai. Look at that, it is considerably smaller. And do I see a sunspot at all? Barely on the right hand side. Lower bottom. Hmm, that's not consistent with what is observed all over the world with a sunspot. Let's try out the moon. For the moon I got this happy little smiley face to represent the face of the moon. 
and I've colored the back half of the ball dark because I'm going to do this as if it was a full moon just to show you how totally inaccurate you guys are. So we'll go place this over on our stand. I'm going to have my daughter help me out on this so you can actually see me do it in real time. We are going to try to aim it at my location. Hmm, that looks pretty close. We'll even turn it a little bit sideways so it looks like more like the moon. And we'll take a look at it from over here. And this is from my location. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, I got that pretty close. Can't see any shadows on the dark side. And I just see a smiley face. So, I'll zoom out. And in the same shot, I'll go over to Daz's location. And this is what he would see from his position on the disc earth. You might be a little surprised. Oh look, it's a half moon with, no, with the face not facing him. How's that work out, guys? And still in the same shot, I'll go over to Usawaya, which is just a little east of my location by about two hours. And we'll see if it's facing Usawaya like it should be. Oh, where is it at? There you are. Eh, it sort of is, but there's still not a full moon. You can still see some of the black shadow on the left. Gee, I wonder why that is. Well, while we're testing the moon, and you guys seem to think that it can face everywhere at once. We'll move it directly between me and Usawaya on the equator. And make sure I got a straight line here. So there's no, nope, it needs to move a little bit this way a little bit. That's good, a little back, right there. So, We'll again face the full moon at my location. And I think that's got it. And you can see I'm going to my location. And we'll take a good look at the moon. There we go. Look, full moon. So I will zoom out. And just go across to the equator, back to Ushuaia, and notice what we see. Oh look, it's almost a new moon. Well, it's about a half moon, but the problem is it is vertical. But in either case, the moon is not facing Ushuaia anymore. Care to explain that? Okay. That should do it. There's your proof, guys.